In this video, I'm showing you some practical ways to actually free up storage space on your iPhone. Freeing up space will allow you to take more photos, download more apps, and store more content locally on your device. So let's roll the intro and jump in. So I wanna get things started by first showing you how you can understand your iPhone's storage. So inside of settings, if you click on general and then about, this section right here is all about your iPhone storage. You can see how many songs, videos, photos, and applications are stored locally on your iPhone. Keep in mind that the number next to videos and photos could not be representative of the actual amount of items you have stored locally on your iPhone, and that's because of iCloud Photo Library, and I am gonna talk more about that in this video as well. And the final two sections here show the original capacity of your iPhone, so in my case, 128 gigabytes, and then underneath available, this is how much storage I have available right now. And we can also see even more detail about our iPhone storage if we back out of this and click on iPhone storage. So here we can get a complete breakdown of everything on our iPhone that is taking up space. And this section is also organized by size, so the biggest items are going to be at the top and it's gonna get smaller as you go down. And inside this section is actually my first recommendation to you guys. You can see that iOS actually has its own recommendations as to how you can free up some space. Your section here may look a little bit different depending on what settings you have set up, but you can see here the system is recommending that I turn on offload unused applications. We can learn more about this feature if we go back and then scroll down to App Store. At the very bottom, you can see here is offload unused apps. And the description of this feature says, automatically remove unused apps, but keep all the documents and data. Reinstalling the app will place back your data if the app is available on the App Store. So pretty much what this is gonna do is if you turn on this feature, any application that you haven't used in a while, the majority of that application is going to get deleted from your phone to free up space, but all of the important data and documents you had in that app are still going to be stored on your iPhone. Keep in mind that if you turn this on and then you wanna launch one of those apps that was partially deleted, it does require an internet connection to launch that application. So this has happened to me a few times where I have this feature turned on, but I have a pretty bad internet connection and my phone is not able to download that application. So it is a nice way to free up some space, but just keep in mind, if you wanna open one of those apps that was removed, it does have to completely re-download a majority of that app. However, with all that said, I do find that the system is pretty smart with this feature, so it's not gonna remove an application that you just opened last week, for example. It's only gonna do this on applications that you haven't opened for a very, very long time. Another recommendation for freeing up some space on your iPhone is to completely delete applications that you never use. Now, completely deleting an application is going to free up even more space than simply offloading that application. However, I still do have some recommendations as to how you can delete your apps. So especially if you're trying to free up space, you may be deleting more than just one app at a time. And doing it from your home screen can be quite time consuming as you have to click on each individual app. You also can't delete applications right from the app library. I don't know why that this restriction is here, but it would be kind of nice if you could simply swipe on an application and click delete. But as you can see, that feature is not supported in iOS. So how do we work around this? Well, inside of settings, if you go back into iPhone storage, you can actually delete applications right from here. And it will also show the last time that you use that application. So for example, if I wanna remove the Disneyland application, I can simply swipe on it. You can see I have the option to offload the app or I can completely delete the app right from settings. Next up, you wanna go into settings and click on photos. And there are two things I'd recommend turning on in here. The first one is iCloud Photos. So if you have this turned on, it's gonna upload all of your photos and videos to iCloud. So this is going to take up your iCloud storage. However, the way I think about it is you can always buy more iCloud storage space. However, you can't buy more local iPhone space, of course, unless you buy a completely new iPhone. I'd also recommend having optimized iPhone storage 
turned on in conjunction with iCloud Photos. So remember at the very beginning of the video where I talked about the amount of photos and videos you have on your iPhone? Well, you can see here I have 11,000 photos. However, I have optimized iPhone storage turned on. So some of my really old photos are stored in an ultra low resolution state. So while it still is true that I have 11,000 photos on my iPhone, most of those photos are stored in a really low resolution mode. So they're not gonna be taking up as much space on my iPhone. And going back into this iPhone storage page, you can see that my photos app is almost taking up 10 whole gigabytes on my iPhone and that is with optimized iPhone storage turned on. So what this feature is going to do is if my iPhone is getting really close to being full then the photos app is automatically going to start deleting photos and videos and then if I want to view those items again I have to download them from the internet. So I'll quickly give you an example of how this feature works. So I have some photos from over a year ago and just looking at it it looks like these are all stored on my iPhone. However all of these videos are actually in the cloud. So if I press and hold on one of these videos and I want to do something with them, so if I want to share this video, I'll tap on share and then let's say Twitter for example, you can see it actually has to download that video from iCloud as it wasn't stored on my iPhone locally. So you may be picking up on an overall theme of this video and that is whenever the iPhone tries to free up space for you, it tries to offload content that you rarely use and then whenever you want to access that content again, it tries to bring it back in as seamless of a way as it can. And we also see that in my next recommendation which is inside of music settings. So if you turn on what's called optimized storage, this is going to automatically delete any downloaded songs or albums that you haven't listened to in a while. Now it's not going to remove the content from your Apple Music library, it's just going to remove the downloads from your iPhone itself. My next recommendation is also inside of music settings and you want to turn off download in Dolby Atmos. Now of course if you enjoy using this feature by all means keep it on, however just keep in mind that when this is turned on it is going to use a lot more storage when you download your songs in Dolby Atmos. And quickly one last thing inside of Apple Music settings, under audio quality, if you are using lossless audio this can use a lot of storage as well. My next recommendation is for Safari and every time you visit a website, your iPhone is going to store various information about that website in its cache. And it does this to make the website load faster every time you visit it and also to make signing into your various accounts much faster. However, all of this data that your iPhone stores can take up a bunch of storage space on your iPhone. So every now and then I'd recommend going down, clicking on the bookmarks icon, going to your history tab and clearing all of your browsing data from Safari. My next suggestion is for messages. So if I go to my iPhone storage again and then scroll down to messages, you can see that messages for me are taking up almost 400 megabytes on my iPhone and for you it may be taking up even more storage space. So this is a pretty significant amount of storage and you could download a few albums in Apple Music and take a whole bunch of photos using this space. So how can you work on reducing the space taken up by messages? Well there's one thing I'd recommend doing. If you go to your messages settings, there's a feature called keep messages. Now by default this is set to forever. However, if you are really struggling to have storage space on your iPhone, you may want to set it so your iPhone automatically deletes messages after a specified time period. So you can set it up for a year or 30 days. And after that time period, the messages are going to get permanently deleted from your iPhone. And my final recommendation for freeing up space on your iPhone is to simply reboot your phone every now and then. It may sound quite trivial, but I have seen people free up hundreds of megabytes, even gigabytes on their iPhone simply by rebooting it. This is because your iPhone accumulates a lot of cached files and even junk files in the background. Just as we talked about earlier with Safari collecting a whole bunch of cache, your iPhone in general also does that with all of your usage. So I'd recommend rebooting your iPhone every now and then. I'd say do it at least once per week and doing that can free up a whole bunch of space on your iPhone. So live on video right now, I'm gonna try rebooting my phone and let's see how much space I can get back. So before rebooting, I have 64.09 gigabytes. So let's just power off our phone and now we'll turn it back on. 
So now after rebooting, if we go into about, you can see now we actually have 64.8 gigabytes on my phone. So that's almost 800 megabytes of freed up space on my iPhone that I got just by rebooting. And I actually reboot my phone every few days. So if you haven't turned your phone off in a few weeks, if you do a simple reboot, you could be getting back a few gigabytes of storage. So that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully using some of these recommendations, you can free up some space on your iPhone. If you guys found this video interesting and informative, please drop us a like. And also we are getting so close to our goal of 400,000 subscribers. So if you are not yet subscribed, please click the button down below. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me. My name is Michael, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.